We're talking about something tonight that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, how are we going to train and onboard the next 10,000 multi-chain developers? Um, certainly a big task. So I'd love to start off just hearing from each of you guys, what do you think some of the biggest challenges are in onboarding that many devs? Well, um, I think, let me just make sure I'm not blaring the mic. Um, I think uh, it starts really with, one, making it very easy to transition from Web 2 into Web 3. Uh, there's a lot of tooling um, out there that corely focuses on the current Web3 developers in the ecosystem. There's not a lot that's focused on new Web2 developers moving into the ecosystem. I think that building tooling around making it easier for Web2 developers to onboard, plus even at institutions, the ability to just say, oh, I already have a team that's able to program in, Agor in JavaScript, like on Agoric, or even Rust, and they could just transition to start building an application like that. It really creates a, a whirlpool of devs into the ecosystem. Um, we're getting there. I don't think we're quite there yet. Uh, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but I think that's a great starting point. Yeah, I think the, we, we need to ask these questions to developers themselves. And we um, work with a lot of Web2 developers. So we ask this question to them. Like around 26,000 Web2 developers answered a survey we did for them. We asked them, why did you start learning Web3? Uh, and why do you want to you know, just switch into this industry? And the answers are really um, striking and different than what we are already providing in the industry. So it looks like less than 10% of developers starting to learn blockchain technologies are actually interested in starting a company or like building their own, uh, you know, just product. Most of them are interested in uh, building a career in Web3 or using this technology in their nine to five jobs. Uh, and when you think about 10,000 Web2 developers on board to Web3, it is not an easy job and it is like, we need to ask like, why would a good Web2 developer learn Web3 out of nowhere? Like, what is the motivation? So what is more, most challenging for us is, there is not a very clear answer for a developer. Why would you learn Web3? Why would you learn these technologies? Like, if there is not a very clear career pathway for these people, then a lot of people just come in, they learn this technology, they build something, and then they leave. And we have seen this from Electric Capital reports as well. It is so striking that 98% of developers that joined Web3 in 2022 left the industry in Web3 uh, in, in the next year. So we have to question like, yes, we can onboard all these people, but how do we keep those developers? And I think it is really connected to the job opportunities and career opportunities that we can provide. And uh, most of the time we are able to provide like hackathons or bounties and grants. And a lot of Web2 developers are not very familiar with those concepts. So we have to also accept that. And I think if we can, uh, you know, just um, address this challenge and you know, just provide more clear career pathways for developers. We can not only onboard, but also keep those developers in the system. Um, yeah, I, I guess I would have a related point. And I would start by saying, you know, there's sort of a meme in the industry that um, really cool technology sort of starts in Cosmos and then makes its way into the EVM. But I, I think that there are also lessons from the EVM world that we could bring into multi-chain to this question of how to bring developers in, and that is that in EVM land, whether it's Arbitrum or Optimism or Polygon, there are very active ecosystem growth programs and very active developer grants and all sorts of things that make it possible for developers to stay in the ecosystem. And so it would be great to have something like that on the multi-chain side, because I think an inherent challenge of multi-chain is who are you building like, what is your infrastructure layer? Because your infrastructure layer typically has a vested interest in you building there. And if you're decoupled from that, it gives you a lot of freedom and potentially you can deliver a better user experience, but there's a cost from that as well. Awesome. Um, 
You know, I think one theme that kind of came through in a lot of those answers is we as a community probably need to do a little bit better job putting ourselves in the developer's shoes. Why are they interested in this technology? What are they looking to get out of it? Um, as we continue to do that, what do you guys see or what do you anticipate some of the, the biggest challenges from the developer's perspective being? I think... Um it really it depends on the ecosystem, but sticking on the in the multi-chain thesis in the Cosmos specifically, a lot of it has to do with where to start, and I think that is inher inherently built into the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, it's a beautiful thing that it's so decentralized, and there's so many entities in the Cosmos, and I think that goes kind of to your point where why there there's such a strong grant program and all those other ecosystems, there's such grant programs, there's so many, there's great development community in those, in those ecosystems. It's really because in Cosmos, the Cosmos is an ecosystem in its own right, but then you also have a lot of sub-ecosystems that are battling for developers. So it kind of creates a fragmentation that's very hard to overcome, but it's also a beautiful thing because it keeps the ecosystem very decentralized where you know, even when there's massive events that occur, both good and bad, specifically the bad, the Cosmos ecosystem specifically has been very well, very good at overcoming that and still growing and adapting to technology as the, ecos as the entire industry evolves. So I think the, it really comes down to creating a starting point for a developer to come into the ecosystem. I know when I started um, in this space four years ago, five years ago, I did not even know where to start. Um, it was a big challenge. Even to this day, there's still not a lot of documentation. There's still not a lot of resources to know where to go, what to do. I, I think that's a, that's a great challenge to overcome, but it's also worthwhile and will help a lot. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think where to start is a big challenge because like a lot of terms we are using in this, uh, you know, conference as well. They are very foreign to, uh, you know, developers. They don't uh, you know, when, when they start, they don't care about what is zero knowledge, what is multi-chain, what is abstraction. Like, they are just starting from zero, and uh, most of the time, they're like, where should I start? Like, there are so many terms, and I'm so confused, like, uh, you know, how do I enter this field? That is first um, challenge we have seen. And the second thing is, obviously, even if they can enter somewhere, the documentation needs to be updated a lot, or, like, the technology is changing a lot that, like we have seen in s several instances, a course we create, we have to update it like constantly because you know there is these constant updates coming to the technology. And if there is not a good community where these developers can go ask questions, especially in their local environment, you know, not just an online, you know, just Discord, but also like if they cannot find people around them that they can go ask questions when they are stuck with a you know just update or with a bug or other things, like it gets really hard to keep pushing and keep updated with all these changes coming. So like documentation and like finding a good community around them is uh, I think uh, key um, to keep them motivated in such a changing environment. Yeah, those were both great answers. And I don't have a ton to add, but I, I guess the one thing I would add is that um, one thing we see when developers are starting out is sometimes they don't even know where to start. So they might have taken a course, but then what do you do? So we find a lot of developers start out with free RPC calls and faucets, and there's simple basic things that to the rest of us seem kind of, you know, about. but if you're just starting out, it's, it's incredibly important to have those resources. Cool, yeah, great, great answers, great input. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but it really feels as we're sitting here talking about orchestration and multi-chain dApps, we're really kind of entering a new phase of, of blockchain and Web3. And So I'd be curious to hear from you guys, you know, if, if we get a strong multi-chain developer community and start building a lot of these dApps that we're so excited for, how do you see that changing the Web3 landscape? And how do you see that driving the adoption of blockchain and Web3 in the larger marketplace? I can uh, talk on, on, the, on the Calypso side. Uh, and I think that the multi-chain currently is very fragmented, um, as everybody knows. And there's a lot of people out there trying to build solutions to this. 
but it's still very hard for a new, new user to enter this into the multi-chain. Um, I think that's why a lot of people start with Ethereum or even like maybe Solana because there's just so many organizations like Coinbase, et cetera, that have so much support for those, those ecosystems. So, and then once you get into those ecosystems, getting out of them and you know, maybe go transferring it into Cosmos or if you're in ETH and trying to get to Solana, it's like a disaster. It takes eight steps. So like part of our goal at Calypso is to make this seamless. Uh, so when people say, and everybody loves saying this, uh, my, I want my grandmother to be able to use my product, but take any product in crypto, give it to your grandmother or your parents or anybody that hasn't been in crypto and tell them to do something with it and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So our goal with Calypso is to solve that and really make it so it's seamless. So there's one click, action, one click actions from any token. So if you want to stake or if you want to LP or if you want to buy NFT, it doesn't matter where your token is, if it's BTC, Solana, or where it's going and where the action is being performed, it's abstracting that away. And I think once you nail that, you can actually cater to a larger, a much larger audience. And a lot of people don't know this, but there's 8 billion people in the world and only roughly like 200 million people have even touched crypto, let alone stayed in it. So there's still a lot of people to touch and a lot of people to get this in the hands of. And that's kind of our goal. And I think once we have that solved, we'll see a, a massive uh, effect in the space, very similar to what happened in the internet and Web2 space or whatever everybody likes to call it during the mid 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah, I don't have much to add to this. Uh, I'm, I'm mostly excited from the user's perspective. Uh, I mean, if we can make the life of people using these products much more easier, because like they, they won't care about what is working in the background. So if we can make it as seamless as possible, that, that is the most important thing to me uh, personally and to a lot of people actually that will be interested in crypto. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, so, yeah, I guess I would just add that so, so we spend a lot of time working on account abstraction, which is a different kind of abstraction than I think we've talked about. But, you know, abstracting away wallets and chains and the like. And one thing that's become really interesting in working on that is that, yes, for the users, it's it's all about that amazing experience. Um, but it also feels very different when blockchain isn't even part of the dialogue. And it makes me wonder what the industry will feel like and be like when that you know, when that comes to fruition, which it clearly will and will be good for the space. But just curious. Yeah, 100% agree with that. I've, I've always thought as soon as we start talking about solutions and we don't have to use the word blockchain or Web3, we're there, so. Uh, yeah. Well, exciting times ahead. Um, and I want to thank you guys and all the panelists here tonight. You've done a great job. So before we wrap up the panels, maybe we just give them all a round of applause.